sitting around. <laughs> so, this week, 5 o'clock, no Bible study. 6 o'clock, Bible study. 7 o'clock, at council. Anything else? Well, there are a few uh, upper rooms there for you to take. And also, I got a thing for Midwest Mission, and I posted that. So if you want to look at it to see all the things they did. And Amanda has something, too. <laughs> so, on August 26th is when we're going to have our children's BBS day camp. So, if any of you are free to come and volunteer that day, we'd be glad to have you. There's also a donation um, basket by the little stand out there if you would like to donate some money to help out with that. But, yeah. 26, Saturday the 26th, BBS day camp. Anyone else? If not, stand as we are able for a call to worship. <coughs> the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And the risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Hymn number 144. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall show forth thy grace. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Number 70.
maybe we'd have so many people that we wouldn't have enough room for. But it's all up to us now. Because Jesus taught all his disciples how, how, to, how to be a Christian. Now it's up to us to keep that word going and, and make sure that all the rest of the people that aren't Christians help them become Christians, okay? All right, so can we pray now? Dear Lord, thank you very, very much for the time we have together today. And as we go out in the world and spread the word of our, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Genesis chapter 32, verse 22 to 31. And the scripture reads, That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the shore of the Jabbok. <coughs> After he had sent them across the stream, he sent all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that the hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he replied. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was fear. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Please join me as we read antiphonally Psalm 17, verse 1 through 7, and verse 15. Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend my cry. Give ear to my prayer, from my lips freely to see. From you let my vindication come. Let your eyes see the right. If you try my heart, if you visit me by night. If you, if you test me, you will find no wickedness in me. My mouth does not transgress. Concerning what <coughs> others do, I have avoided the ways of the violent by following your word. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. And you find your ear to me, hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with beholding your presence. Our epistle this morning is taken from Romans chapter 9, verse 1 through 5. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirm it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unseeking anguish in my heart. For if I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel, Theirs is the adoption of sonship. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all. Forever praise. Amen. In the 189, fairest Lord Jesus.
this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 through 21. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to the heavens. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us boldly affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge at this quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This week the church prays for the church in Cameroon, Central African Republic, and Equatorial Guinea. Are there any joys or prayer requests this morning? I have um, the family of um, Isidore Mako. And also for Kim, she has a migraine, terrible migraine, she says. So. And then. Okay, I have a request here for Andy, son of Jerry and Anita. He's having surgery tomorrow at Mayo. Bridget and it's her brother-in-law, so anyone else? I'd like to introduce my other daughter, Beth, and her <laughs> husband, Mike. They're from uh, Tomahawk, Wisconsin, and they've been with us for a week. They even came Wednesday night for Bible study and came back, so <laughs> <laughs> followed by a moment of silent personal prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you love us so much that you invite us to partake in the ministry of the church. We ask that as we see needs in and around our community and throughout the world, that we would have compassion <coughs> like you had compassion and care for those needs. Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, your forgiveness,
and your acceptance of us just as we are. Forgive us. Too many times we fail to do your will. Father, we pray for our church as we continue through this process of disaffiliation and then as we make decisions concerning our future. We ask for wisdom and guidance. Father, we pray also for the church in Cameroon, in the Central African Republic, and Equatorial Guinea. Lord, they, next door neighbor, Niger, has a coup, possibility of war. Be with those countries even now as they struggle with poverty and so many other problems. Bless your church. Lord, we pray for Isidore's family. We pray for Brett, Bridget's brother-in-law with cancer. We pray for Keith. We pray for Andy as he undergoes surgery tomorrow. We pray for the unspoken requests, the things that we did not voice. Christ, O oh Lord, invites to his table all who loves him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another with the unison prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an immediate church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God.
one of my favorite stories from Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 through 21. Most of us know it as the feeding of the 5,000. And I thought Brett was going to do feeding of 5,000. How Jesus miraculously fed all those people. The reality is, if you read the scripture, it should be renamed. Not 5,000. The scripture said there were about 5,000 men, women, and children. So there was 5,000 plus you, you, women usually outnumber men anyway in many things. So there's at least 10 and then you throw in the kids. I don't know about you, but as I read this story, I see the disciples as very practical people. Jesus, on the other hand, gives us some very impractical advice. Well, let's put the story first in context. The scripture said, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. That's where the scripture picks up. So in order for us to truly understand why Jesus got in a boat to privately withdraw to a solitary place, we need the scripture what? Before it. And there are two events that happened just before this that has an impact on why Jesus got in a boat privately and withdrew to a solitary place. If you remember last week's scripture, we didn't do much with it, but Jesus' mother and brothers and sisters came to get him. I didn't emphasize it. The reason they came to get him was the chief priests and the Pharisees and the scribe and all the religious people had made a decision that they were going to kill him. And his family, mama heard, and let's be realistic, if you heard that your kid was going to get killed, what would you do? Try to protect him. So mom came with brothers and sisters and they called him and we remember the famous word, Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, ask the question, who's my mother and who are my brothers and sisters? And he pointed to his disciples. All his disciples are the family of God. But the real threat was that they were going to do what? Kill him. I don't know if Jesus blew it off. But the second thing that happened, and more importantly, was he heard the news that John the Baptist had been what? Beheaded. Herodias had tricked Herod into beheading John. And if Herod was willing to behead John, what's the likelihood that Herod can also kill Jesus? Pretty high. Not only that, who was John to Jesus? We all know he, they, were, they were related. I don't know about you, but if one of your close relative died, what would you be doing? You would be in what? Grief. Someone important. We know that they're related. Mary and Elizabeth were what? Cousins. And so here he heard his cousin was beheaded because of his ministry, the likelihood of Jesus being killed. And so the scripture said when he heard this because Jesus was in grief, dealing with his own what? Stop. Let's be realistic. We all have lives. We all have lives and we have family and if one of our close relatives die, we would be in we all have our own agendas. I like to say I have places to go, people to see, and things to do. We all do, don't we? Jesus had his agenda, and he didn't want to deal with people at that time. He got in a boat privately, and he went to a solitary place. He wanted to be what? Alone. But the scripture said, hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from all the towns. So he got in a boat and he sails off. And as he's sailing off, people say, that's Jesus on the boat. So they come, And as they keep following him, more and more people keep from all the different towns keep following him. He said, verse 14, when Jesus landed, going to a solitary place to be alone, when he landed, he saw a large crowd. I don't know about you, 
But here he had his agenda, but the crowd had their agenda. Isn't that the way life is? We have our things we want to do. We have our plans. And we crash into the world. And the world have what? <coughs> Different plans. Jesus saw the crowd. A large crowd. And here's what the scripture said. He had compassion on them. As disciples of Jesus Christ, when we, with our gender, run into the world with all its problems, we truly need to have compassion on them. See, so many times we are focused on our problems, our own problems that we're dealing with. But in reality, as we look around, we can always see people, even here in this church right now, people with what? Worse problems than we have. Do we have compassion on our fellow human beings? Do we care about their problems? Or are we so focused on our agenda and our problems only? The scripture said Jesus saw them. And even though he was in grief, even though he wanted to be alone, he had what? Compassion. And so as disciples of Jesus Christ, we too need to have compassion on our fellow human beings. The scripture goes on, he not only had compassion on them, but he healed their sick. Once upon a time, the church used to care about the sick. We used to have hospitals. Downtown Rochester, there's a hospital called Methodist Hospital. Named from what? The Methodist Church. You know today, any new hospital cannot be Named after a church or anything else. Why? Cost too much. At least that's the excuse we give. We got out of the healing people business. The Catholic Church used to have Catholic hospitals too. All hospitals now are what? County hospitals, state hospitals, big business hospitals. We no longer have compassion on those who are sick and needy and care. But that's what we are called to do. His disciples being very practical people. Verse 15 says, As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go into the village and buy themselves some food. Some food. I don't know about you, but a disciple sometimes state what? The obvious. Jesus went to what? A solitary place. I mean, the, you know, this is a remote, solitary place. It's already getting late. The scripture said it was what? Evening. Je I, mean, I don't know about, but I think Jesus already knew it was a solitary place and it was late, you know what I mean? But they state the obvious, this is a remote place, it's already getting late. But their real agenda was to what? Send the people away. So that they can go and buy for themselves. We have our problems. Let everybody else deal with what? Their problems. Send them away so that they can buy for themselves some food. Very practical. Isn't it? Take care of me, myself, and I first. But is that the Christian way? Here Jesus responds. They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. How many times do we as a church, we have people come in and we kind of, and we send them away. Are we the church to care for those who are less fortunate? Do we have things like food bank and other things that we contribute to, to help those who are less fortunate? I know at the Otter Tail Church, first Sunday we do what we call benevolence <coughs> offering. It's called benevolence because it's for those people who are what? Less fortunate. This, the part of it is, once upon a time, time, the church used to help out what? The poor. Today it's all, uh, you know, at Pearl we have a food bank. But we can still participate in the food bank here. The reality we are called 
Isn't that what Jesus said? You fed me. You visited me when I was sick. Gave me a cup of water. We as disciples of Jesus Christ, He's telling us that we don't send people away. We are to care for those who we encounter. You give them something to eat. The disciples being very practical again say, we only have five loaves and bread and two fish. As a matter of fact, they have five loaves and two fish. Just enough food for who? The twelve of them and Jesus. We have enough food just for us. So many times we're worried about the little that we have that we, we go, where the poor? I can tell you, I've seen poor people and there's, you know, yeah, we have some people that have are poor. But in America, we are a rich country. But here is Jesus' answer to us when we go. As a church, we are a poor church. Bring them here to me, he said. Whatever little we have, we ought to what? Bring it to the Lord. And here's the miracle. If we give it to the Lord, it can be what? Multiplied. Whatever little. We give as we have means. Not, you know, some people are better off than others. We give as we have means. And it is multiplied to further the kingdom of God. Here we see Jesus took the little that they had. He told the people, sit on the grass. First thing he did. First thing he did. He gave what? Thanks. How many of us are thankful for what we have? Or do we complain? All I have is five loaves and two fish. Look at the little I have. The first thing we need to do is have an attitude of gratitude. Be thankful for what we have. So he gave thanks and then he broke it and he gave it. And I want for us to catch this. He gave it to the disciples and the disciples gave it to the people. The truth is, we as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ are His hands and His feet. He gave us responsibility. He gives it back. What we give to the church or to anything else, He gives it what? Back to us. For us to distribute. The, the, the miracle was not about the 5,000 people, folks. The miracle was to teach the disciples an important lesson. And here's how we know why. Verse 20 says, They all ate, and they were satisfied. Everybody, the disciples, Jesus, 5,000 men, how many thousand women, how many thousand kids, they all ate and they were all what? Satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces. And it was not an accident that they picked up 12. There were 12 disciples, so each disciple picked up a what? A basketful. If there were 50 disciples, they would have picked up 50 basketfuls. The miracle was not the 5,000. It was to teach the disciples that whatever you have, we are to care for others and to give from what we have. We should be thankful for what we have. And we should share it. What little each and every one of us contribute, God can use to transform the world. It's a miracle. But the miracle is to teach us we don't need to hoard and hang on to what little we have. Be thankful for it. Be giving generously. Be working. We should care and have compassion on those less fortunate. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Let us prepare for our communion by having our communion hymn. Let us break bread right together in number 618.
And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we are all partakers of the one loaf. The bread which we are sharing is the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is the sharing of the blood of Christ. I invite you to come as we share of the body and blood of Christ.
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourselves to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Please stand for our benediction and our hymn of dismissal. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 77.